So this is what we're making, a fold form pendant that looks a bit like an arrowhead. No soldering. So this is meant to be a pendant for a boy. And I want to make it a bit, look a bit like an arrowhead. So this is just going to be a fold form pendant, but I'm using fairly thick sterling. And normally I'd use fine silver for this, but because it's for a kid, we want it to be fairly tough. We don't want the bale to come undone and we don't mind it oxidizing. So uh, sterling, I think is it. So this is 0.7, and I think I'll make that a little narrower. So I have, I have a bit of a pattern to uh, follow. So I can just scale this down. So this is 40 millimeters wide by 60 millimeters long. So four by six. So we could make that 20 by 30. So I like that. So we'll just cut it out quickly and see what it looks like. I think that I think that'll look pretty good for a boy and we'll just slightly round off these points so it's not sharp. So it'll look sharp, but it won't be sharp. And it's gonna be a bit of an effort opening this up, but I think it'll be fine. So we'll just I mark out the silver and most of it I will shear. So this is twenty millimeters wide. And I'm just setting my calipers at twenty. And we'll just drag a line down the back. And I'll shear that. I 
and in total length. is 45 so there's my piece of metal which is 20 by 45 total now you could just put your pattern on there saw it out um, pattern it without folds forming it but because I like fold forming I'm just going to fold this hammer it and then cut it out so you have your choice I mean that's a nice pendant and with this tab on there once you're through hammering you would anneal it and then roll your bale and and it would look fine it would look pretty but fold farming will make it slightly different now we need to anneal this so we'll just bring it up to a dull red and you can use any torch for this even a uh, creme brulee torch would be fine because we just need to anneal the metal. We don't need to do any soldering. So that's a dull red. And kind of hold it at that color for about 30 seconds. Lovely. Now we'll quench it in water. Dry it off. And then I put it back on the warm charcoal block to finish drying the water off it. So if you could see it or not, but you could see the water evaporate. So now all the water has evaporated and it's cool enough to touch. And the charcoal block is still quite hot, so be careful. And oftentimes I'll just put it on my bench plate to finish cooling off. Now, <clears throat> you could hold this in a vise at the halfway point, hammer it over, and then hammer it closed. But I have a V groove in my uh, bench block and I have a tapered plastic hammer and you can see how easy it is to actually bend that And then we just hammer it so the edges come together. Take your time and you can usually get it fairly close.
So that's not bad. That's closer than I normally get it. And then I'm just going to use my bench block. I could go over and use my anvil. Now what we want is a fairly deep uh, mark, hammer mark, so that it looks a bit like a chip for the uh, arrowhead. So fairly deep pattern marks and the smaller the ball the better it'll it'll give you a better mark um, and this is just a chasing hammer that uh, I'm using flip it over do the other side Get the light reflecting off it so that you can see all of your hammer marks and know that you'll probably take most of the hammer marks out of the other side. So now it's time to cut it, cut it out. So I'm just going to put my pattern with the folded side towards me, line up the point, and line up the top point on this on the other side. And just mark it out with your texture. Easy. So I'm using a 4-0 blade on my saw and a little bit of beeswax. Always run the blade up so you don't fill up the teeth. So now it's just a matter of cutting this part out. So basically it's three straight cuts.
I don't mind showing the broken blade thing. We're all human. that's that. Now the bale or the tab here at the top I will file with my Swiss number two cut that hand file. And the very end now I'm, I'm going to file and sand these sides, but I'm, I'm going to go back after I've sanded it and hammer it again because I, I don't want a straight machined look because an arrowhead is, is serrated. doesn't have to be perfect, we just don't want it sharp. I'm pretty happy with that. So back on the block or the anvil and leave the tab alone. The straight side on it is good and we're just going to lightly hammer down the side. So now we can anneal this and open it up. So once again we bring this up to a dull red and we need we need to anneal the whole piece. Quench it in water. And dry it off. Now at this point I'm going to hallmark the tab because that way it'll be it'll be hidden and it won't interfere with our pattern on the piece. And it's annealed, so it'll hallmark quite easily. Now, this is a personalized piece for a boy, and what I would do at this point is I would stamp his initials, one on either side, so that when I open it up, the initials will be in the back, but it'll, it'll be personally his, so it makes it a bit nicer. Um, 
So I would just use a letter stamp. And I'll just start opening it using my burnisher. And like I say, this is this is sterling, so it's it may be a bit of a and when once you get it to start open like this, you could use a triangular or a square ring mandrel, uh, but if you don't have one, you can use the edge of anything that has a 90 degree bend. So just take your time and try to get the whole thing open, but not the tab on the end. Now, once you get it open, if the hammered part is going to be out, that's fine. If the inside part is going to be out, what you're probably going to have to do is hold that over the edge of your block and use your hammer again to put the hammered pattern back in. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll do that on my bench block. So just hold the seam down. Flip it around and do the other side. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to file the point a little bit because it's a little bit square although you could leave it. So I'm just going to slightly round it. So just touch up the points with your sanding stick. We want it to look sharp, but we don't want it to be sharp. And then flat round pliers, and my hallmark is here, so I want that to be on the outside. So just bend that until it touches. Leave your pliers in, twist it to the back. It doesn't have to be soldered, but it has to touch so that your cord won't come out. So now it's just a matter of pickling and putting it in the tumbler. Now, it will turn dark because it's sterling, but that's fine. It's, that's part of what sterling does. But for now, we'll polish it and make it shiny. So, into the pickle. All right, we're out of the pickle. And at this point, there's a fine silver coating on the piece. And if you tumble it, it'll burnish that fine silver. 
and uh, stay shiny longer. If you polish it on the wheel, you'll take off that fine silver coating and you'll have fire scale that you'll have to deal with. So, for me, in the tumbler. All right, we're out of the tumbler. And there's our pendant, fit for a man or a boy. I would probably put it on a leather cord. So I'm quite pleased with that.